This video is supported by Galder's Gazetteer, a 5e expansion for advanced players. This may come as a surprise to some of you, but I am a big fan of dungeons. At the end of my last home campaign, I counted, and we did 12 traditional dungeon crawls, including some classic tropes. A sunken temple, a ruined keep, sewer systems, caverns, and sometimes the players backtracked and revisited those dungeons again at higher levels. All in all, we did like 14 or 15 dungeon crawls. Big part of my campaign. I love running them, I love designing them, and I'm always looking to improve my craft. So at the last session, I asked the players, out of all the dungeons I had lovingly created for them, which was their favorite? And unanimously, they chose the one not written by me, but by Chris Perkins. This right here is a rare book and a piece of gaming history. Ghosts of Dragonspear Castle was printed exclusively for Gen Con 2013 as part of the D&D Next Playtest rules. You can get a PDF off DM Guild, but original copies are really hard to come by. I paid a pretty penny for that nice thumbnail. Join my $1 Patreon. As well as being a curio and a glimpse into the game halfway through the design process, it's also a really fun, fast-paced adventure, anchored by four old-school dungeons. And one of those, Ambergold Estate, was my player's favorite. And after hearing that and getting my heart broken, I did what anyone who's trying to improve their craft should do. I asked why. I wanted to know what about that dungeon the players found so enjoyable so I could emulate it in my own design. And surprisingly not, the five different players gave five different answers. They liked that the dungeon was interactive. They liked its layout, its theme. They liked the related NPCs. And they liked that it had layers of objectives. There were many different things they were trying to accomplish at once. So the rest of the video is gonna be going over those elements. Why I think they're useful to put in dungeons and some examples of how Ambergold Estate employed them. I'm gonna point out some of the cool features, some things that my players did and they really enjoyed, and some puzzles and traps for you to steal. A general tip for adventure writing is you want your hook to actually be many different hooks. You want to have lots of different reasons the characters could want to get involved. In Lost Mine of Fandelver, why do you go after Gundren? Gundren is your cousin. He holds a map to a historic arcane location. That's also a mine that could make the PCs wealthy. Lots of reasons to go on the adventure. The hook for the Ambergold Estate dungeon is a variation of that. Not only does it cast a wide net, but it also hints at several different objectives. And the best part, they can all be accomplished in a single location, in the dungeon. The PCs first learn of the Ambergold Estate from an NPC with an interesting dilemma. In fact, I've never heard the particular hook before. The party is on the lookout for members of a dangerous cult, and they've placed wanted posters out around the town. Then, discreetly they are approached by a halfling female with a worried look. And she's pregnant. The father of my unborn child is in great danger, and I fear for his life. His name is Arasan. He left town to look for work elsewhere, but I'm afraid he fell in with a bad crowd. He would give me money and not say where he got it. The last time I saw him, he told me about some treasure buried under a ruined estate. He left and he said he would return to me a rich man. When I first told Arasan I was pregnant, he paid a witch who practices herbal medicine to look after me. Yesterday, I saw her face on a wanted poster. 50 gold pieces for information leading to her arrest. 1,000 for her capture. Since Arasan left, I haven't seen the woman. If there's trouble, Arasan will find it. I don't want the Duke's guards to arrest him. I don't want our child to grow up without a father. And boom, in 30 seconds, we got two reasons to go on that adventure, to find the cultist witch and to bring home the father to be. But wait, there's more. Following the adventure, in short order, the party also learns that the ruined estate houses a MacGuffin that they're after, a black seal on a cursed altar. The cult is after it too, so it becomes a race against time. Because as soon as the witch recovers it, she'll kill the dig party, Arasan included, to cover her tracks. Knowing that there was a lot going on in the dungeon, as well as many different ways to succeed or fail, made the players really invested in what was going on. Playing into the design strength of a dungeon as a confined space, the players knew that all of that plot could get resolved as long as they kept exploring. I know I said I was going to cover the whys of why my players like the dungeon, but I've already gone over layout and theming extensively in my Zelda video, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much here. Except to say, this is an excellent example of how to use multiple entryways, a central room, and looping and branching paths to create this feeling of navigation and exploration, progress and discovery, what we should be calling jaw casing the dungeon. It's pronounced Jeff. The dungeon also exemplifies how to use a single theme, in this case Elemental Earth, to tie everything together. It makes those disparate parts feel connected and unified. And the monsters, minotaurs, gargoyles, and medusa were Earth-themed too. 
And there is one unique twist that this dungeon does to really force the players to navigate the space and engage with its theme. It's not something that I ever would have recommended, but it worked out really well in practice, so I have to share. In the second or third room, there is a series of runes etched in black stones representing the elements. Remember, this is an Earth-themed dungeon, so if the players are clever, they'll hit the Earth rune, and doing so teleports them, but it's somewhere where they want to be. Choosing the wrong rune, however, also sets off the teleportation, but it's a trap. The fire rune, for instance, sends the players into the halls of scald flesh. And this happens like right in the entryway. The dungeon is set up to split the party. And I gotta say, contrary to expectations, my players really enjoy the idea of exploring the dungeon and trying to find each other. But those runes are also not a strict gotcha style trap. They don't jump out the wall and get you. The players have to choose to interact with it. And that leads us to our next section. As a dungeon, Ambergold Estate has a lot of things to do. And what I mean by that is besides skulking hallways, kicking down doors, and killing monsters, there are a lot of moments, a lot of points in the dungeon that just beg the players to stop and ask, what does this do? Players are most engaged when they can see they are having a direct impact on the game. In dungeons that have lots of levers to pull, runes to read, treasure to steal, and other things that tempt your players into instigating action, suck them right into the fiction. Ambergold Estate excels in delivering opportunities for just that. There are lots of sarcophagi lids to push, buttons to press, statues with mouths to stick your hand into, and there's this whole room filled with different pools. Each one is a trap or a puzzle. In my favorite instance, they tried to use a pit as a temporary prison for a band that they had captured, but they accidentally filled it with molten gold while he was in there by solving a riddle. All players express agency in the game by trying to make things happen. And more often than not, they absolutely delight in poking your world and seeing how it reacts. And we as DMs, we want to foster that feeling. To be honest, when one of my players said the NPCs were her favorite part of the dungeon, I was a little bit surprised. After all, we don't usually think of NPCs as a key component of dungeon design. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a random dungeon generator that has NPCs as one of its assets. But on second thought, yeah, it's totally obvious that having great NPCs will make a great dungeon. Dungeons have exploration, dungeons have combat, of course dungeons should have social interaction. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there's a really interesting dynamic between the two main NPCs. The evil witch who's leading the cult that suckered the bandit dig crew, including Arasan. The baby's mama with a heart of gold who can't help but get into trouble. But there are also a lot of quirky supporting characters with just enough detail in the adventure to help you improvise around. There's a bandit that picks their nose, a half-ogre who only speaks a few words of Dorfish, and spirits that drop hints of their tragic past. And all these NPCs are also staggered throughout the dungeon. And this is really useful because it creates some narrative texture. So now there's dialogue and roleplay to break up the action and combat scenes. And spacing out those NPCs also gives rise to some dramatic tension. You'll talk to one NPC, learn something, and then you have to sit and stew on that information until your next interaction. And sometimes the NPCs were just plain fun. My player's favorite is you run into this proto-lich named Alicia and, well, she's kind of daffy. She's kind of lost her mind and thinks it's great fun that there are people trying to plunder her family crypt. She'll trash talk her dead family members and the other gang in the tomb. She gives the players a cool item too, this mechanical cat that follows them around. She can see through its eyes because she thinks it'll be amusing to watch them fail and die. I don't know, it was just a really fantastic NPC interaction, something my party was talking about months later. It was just one more element that made this dungeon especially memorable. And yeah, that's it. That's the video, folks. If you want to know more about Ambergold Estate, I did a stream where I went through the whole thing room by room, and you can get that and dozens of other streams on my $1 Patreon. I also have a book, Galder's Gazetteer. If the expanded rule set, new player options, GM toolkit, and two adventures aren't enough for you, all the proceeds are donated to the Cancer Research Institute, link below. And of course, I'm incredibly grateful for the community that we've built together. You can help out by subscribing, join the conversations on Twitter or Discord, and by letting me know your thoughts in the comments below. Sue me, dickhead.